thank you very much for taking a look. Originally, I was going to send my brother a couple of photos, but it turned out to be this video instead. I want to thank Mary my Townsend, my cousin, Sophie and Jamie, my assistants, and Ben Wood for his magic movie work. I came out to San Francisco 45 years ago. I moved under Sutro Tower 35 years ago. The Canoe family built this house in 1921 when there was virtually nothing up here but cows. We recently had the house painted and unfortunately they cut down all the flowering vines as well as the ailing redwood tree that grew through the roof. I live in the lower part of the house and we have raccoons, skunks, and screeching parrots. In the 1800s, the Dutch couple bought a good portion of the hill and built the original houses on Twin Peaks. The couple were music professors at San Francisco State University and the music center is named after them. They built an additional house next to theirs where they house more musicians and writers and actors and dancers and poets and artists. They were the Bohemians of the era. From the Twin Peaks, they could see San Francisco rapidly growing right after the gold rush. It's good that I can't see all these towers that have cropped up. It's no longer my little city by the bay. To the front stairs to my door. When I was dying of AIDS, I would climb up and down the stairs 10 times in the morning, 10 times a night, probably saved my life. There's some really fragrant plants at the bottom of the stairs. And when my blind friends come over, when the aroma gets real strong, they know it's time to start climbing. We spend a lot of time out here on the deck. This lamp over there is from the Fairmont Hotel where they did a $20 million restoration of the lobby. General, my guide dog and I have a long history at the Fairmont. As Commodore of my sailing club, we would go there for check passing ceremonies. General and I sailed with the Bay Area Association of Disabled Sailors for 14 years. We anchored out on overnights all over the Bay Area, up and down the Pacific Coast. One time we were sailing and a seal poked their head out of the water and General and the seal were barking at each other and we figured that they were probably making fun of the blind guy who was at the helm. She was a dynamite dog. Over the past 30 years, I've rebuilt the barbecue twice blind. I built this bamboo pot. It looks like the vegetation's taking it over. When I moved in here, there was two little windows and a couple of bunk beds that were built in and a toilet in the corner. I built a range hood which was a labor of love. And the cabinet windows came out of a tugboat that I found in a marine salvage yard. Uh, this place, place was a bit of a party palace for many years. This beam in the kitchen ceiling was already here when I built the kitchen. When I moved in here, I put this curb in the ceiling, put a doorway into the back apartment, and move the kitchen. I built this table, if you'll notice that there's a redwood tree trunk for a table leg. It sits eight people, and I built all the pottery that's on top. I built this armoire. You'll have to pay extra to look inside. I built this mirror, it's five by five feet, and it has a little history to it that I'll reveal later. I built this bed, it's a California king size. The first piece of furniture I built. I refinished this piano about 35 years ago. It's a 1901 Weber Grand. 
The soundboard and the harp are still in great condition after 122 years. I started creating media events for different social political causes in which I had concerns. When I first came to California, Dan White shot Moscone in milk, and he got five years in prison and got out in three years on good behavior. The whole city erupted, and I did this reenactment, and I was on front page newspapers and news shows, and three days later, Dan White committed suicide. My second media event was because my employees and I were getting all these parking tickets. I built this beautiful elongated car with nine doors and a front and rear quarter panel of a race car design put it out in front of the old main public library with the street columns. And just the position of the two was to spark a conversation on how to solve San Francisco's parking problem. My friend Javier was one of the first people to die during the AIDS epidemic. <clears throat> I built a sculpture to help raise awareness and fundraising for a cure. Someone rang the fire alarm and thousands of people came down out of the federal building and surrounded the sculpture. People were crying, people were arguing. Usually I stand out in front and talk to the people and the reporters, but this time I just went over and sat in my truck and watched. I hate litter. I, this juicy fruit wrapper is three and a half feet long. I made eight sculptures plus about 50 cigarette butts and put them in Golden Gate Park during the Beta Breakers race in front of City Hall and along the Embarcadero. Uh, this was the last media event that I did before I became totally blind. This is during the Clinton impeachment hearings and I burned an effigy, all the politicians involved for their hypocrisy. Women were the victims of all of this. When we went to the fire department to get the permit, I could hardly make out the clerk behind the desk. We did not want to reveal that the blind man was going to play with fire. The day we set up the sculpture, we did it in front of the San Francisco City Hall front doors. My guys tried setting the fire, but it wouldn't work. And in frustration, I ran over and threw a container of gasoline on the sculpture. The whole thing went up in flames. It, the, the heat was so intense that it scorched the concrete pavement. When the politicians walked out the front door of City Hall, the first thing in their line of sight is Gallagher's reminder to behave themselves. Not too far later, the city passed an ordinance outlawing any fire in any future demonstrations. I made this vase of me and Brill's heads after we sailed along the coast of Brazil among the beautiful islands and leaking oil rigs. This piece only makes sense if you're familiar with the old adage, diamonds in the rough, which means when you first look at something, you may dismiss it as ugly, but in deeper review, you may find it has a lot of value. I was sighted when I was doing bungee jumping. This last time I went, I got a rope burn on my neck. I never went bungee jumping again. I went to South Africa to do a little spelunking to look around for Paleolithic hay paintings. I started seeing uh, dots in my field of vision. I came back to the States and I found out that not only was I going blind, but I had AIDS. I tried all kinds of methods to save my sight and ended up with an IV bag hanging from my living room ceiling for eight hours a day. I started playing what I call gay blues on piano. And 
I, <clears throat> I had these recorded and uh, I had a guy transcribe them onto sheet music, but he screwed up. I lost the recordings over the years. And after 30 years of little Alzheimer's, this is all that's left of that song. Like a dog on a leash. Like a dog on a leash. Like a dog on a le leash. And I can't go nowhere. They're telling me to this thing. And you learn to stay. Like a dog on a leash. I also was writing poetry, and one of the cleaner ones is how do I write these indecipherable pieces? To fit the puzzle together, a series of short theses that definitely make no sense to my far-reaching friends. They quit listening at the beginnings, not the ends. So I'll sit and throw paper as fast as I can through the winters and summers, again and again to make thoughts from a sage Dissecting life stage, but in reality, probably only spewing from a pen of a nobody. Then I started taking window screen and stapling it to plywood and covering it with plaster, which I called mock rock, and started painting. This was the uh, first painting I made after I came back from Africa. I call it Man Innovation Over Nature. It's ironic because the majority of the paintings that the cave people did were peaceful or tranquil. The Neanderthals were amazed by birds. In all the caves, there were birds everywhere. It was the most popular painting that they did. Uh, this painting is called The Dancing Warriors. If I hadn't have been hooked up to an IV, I doubt that I would have had the patience to paint all those dancers. In this painting, you'll see three sets of footprints coming from the right side, and two of the animals are laughing as they walk off into the distance, while what we think may be a coyote is up looking at us, saying, what are you doing here? I saw this painting in southern France in 1967. Uh, I'd love to sit down with the artist and his girlfriend because they've pretty got a pretty good sense of humor. This is the last painting I did before I started losing my eyesight. I took this picture from a friend's plane the day after my 40th birthday which I had in that old dry dock ship's restaurant on the shore of South Beach. Little did we know that nine years later I'd be blind, and for the next 20 years I'd be teaching sailing at the Bay Area Association of Disabled Sailors. After I went completely blind, I started building furniture. This couch is a double-wide bed with rope lockers for linens. And if you look at the bow and the stern, you'll see all the detail. It took me two years to build this thing. This window has reflections of trees on a cove. There are 364 pieces on this. And I had enough glue build up on my fingers that I had to use a razor blade to clean them. It took me a year to build this. My friends were saying my living room was starting to look like a captain's quarters. So I built this mast just as a whim. I'm a member of ZGAT, the Zero Gravity Arts Consortium, whose mission is to foster art and culture during space travel and colonization of the planets. We are invited down to the International Space Development Conference to provide entertainment during zero gravity flights. I'm considered the first blind performance artist in weightlessness. I used to go to this Michelin rated French restaurant here in the city. One night I inadvertently put my hand under the pink tablecloth of a candlelight and found a whole bunch of gum underneath the table. I asked the owner the next day if I could come back and take pictures of the gum and the next four months I spent 
Pit taking pictures from Knob Hill to the Tenderloin. I threw the pictures in a shoebox and forgot about them. Later I went blind and I was teaching blind kids how to go grocery shopping and I have pharmaceutical companies providing aromas and fragrances so they'd know how to smell oranges and potatoes and bubble gum. The San Francisco Art Commission put out a call for blind artists for exhibit at City Hall where I dug out the old photographs, put a tube of bubblegum concentrate and a little prose about you never know who's sitting at the table next to you. I submitted it to the San Francisco Art Commission and they inadvertently spilled the concentrate on the table, the carpet, the guy's clothes, and they had to vacate the Art Commission boardroom for months. But they accepted the piece. The painting, was, the piece was in San Francisco City Hall. There was a woman who walked through and complained about the smell of the bubblegum. She complained to the Art Commission. I kept on reducing it, reducing it, and she complained, complained. The media got a hold of it. Turned out the radical artists versus the radical environmentalists were going all over the place, and the Art Commission and I were in the middle of it. I pulled the piece, and I've never done any more public art since. I started taking violin lessons. General and I would take about three hours round trips to, over the mission to do a 45-minute music session. I converted Skype's video conferencing to help assist the blind remotely. I'd stand in front of my living room mirror with a camera on top of a baseball hat and a microphone and an earpiece. My instructor could look at my form and fingering and I wouldn't have to spend three hours going back and forth. This morphed into GeneralServices.org. People, both blind and sighted, realize the potential of being able to do anything that they never had thought possible. I received this award from the Nevada Blind Center. Janet and Steve Wozniak of Apple had been following the general project and had told them about my project. Things were going great until I came down with kidney failure and all the ramifications from a transplant. An outfit called Be My Eyes ran with it. If you snooze, you lose. You can watch these boats being remotely guided on generalservices.org. Jan Wozniak had previously told me about autonomous navigation research for assisting the blind. I thought it'd be a great idea to put it in at the marina and to get my blind sailors around the marina and down to the boats independently. Janet hooked me up with uh, students at UC Berkeley in which two teams were formed. Frank Peralta, from, the co-founder from Mobility Hacks, brought another team from Stanford, and the two universities started collaborating. Are you recording? Yeah, I am. Good. It's recording. Great. This is the boat you got to take across the Atlantic, Gary. Yeah, right. I think it's a little too much work. <laughs> way too much. Top of the mast. It's a long way up. One, two, three, four yeah. spreaders. <laughs> four yeah, spreaders. Yeah, he said it's 11, he says 11 stories high. Four spreaders. 115 feet. Can Gary, you there? Yeah, can you feel it in the boat as they're bringing it in? Does it, does it feel like a yeah, small? They're, they're bringing the sheets in. Yeah, so and yeah. we're coming up into the wind. Looks like you're almost down the wind now. I make one of these Norwegian Christmas balls every year. This last Christmas, the misfortunes of the three men changed the face of Babs. Stan epitomized Babs. He came to learn how to sail, and in five years and $500,000 later, he was ready to do the single hand 
race between San Francisco and Hawaii. Unfortunately, he died trying. He was not going to quit. He was going to just push barriers to the max. Carl was an avid sailor and he lost his sight. He gave up sailing, sold his boat, and died. They wanted us for $100,000, and this is prompting us to increase our outreach and accessibility for the blind so others do not experience what Carl endured. The third guy was Scott. He had an uh, injury from a fall and became a paraplegic. I was sailing with he and his brother, Tyler, and I told him I was putting an autonomous navigation system in at the marina. And Tyler says, that's what I do for a living. And he so graciously offered to not only build the project, but fund it as well. Uh, early this next year, we will be holding a pilot project with the Lighthouse for the Blind and the Veterans Administration. If the pilot project proves to be successful, the Port Authority said they wanted us to continue it along San Francisco's waterfront. I've been talking to the Port Authority about bringing in the university students' research and adding history and culture to the navigation app. This app can be utilized by both the blind and sighted communities. Perhaps in the future, I'll be using cyberspace as a new art form. We'll see what happens. Thanks for watching.